No, I do not. So let's make one. First thing you're gonna need are some stands. Why? Well, because you have to take the front wheel off. In order to do that, you have to lift the front of the bike up so that you can remove the wheel and tire assembly. First thing I do is kind of tape this up to make sure I don't accidentally uh, use the brake. I don't want to use the front brake. Using an eight millimeter hex, start taking off and breaking these bolts right here for the calipers. There will be four bolts. Now this is a bracket for the reflector that I removed. There would normally be a spacer here, but this bracket acts as a spacer. This is on the right side. I didn't like the reflector. I didn't like the way it looked, so I removed it. So then we just simply take this off. Okay, update, unlike the V4S, uh, these are harder to get out. I think these are actually much bigger uh, calipers because this is based off the Panigale. So this was a little bit harder to get off. Because of the 17 inch wheel, the V4S has a 19 inch wheel, which made the calipers really easy to get off. So you really have to spread open the, uh, a lot in order to get these off. And next is gonna be cracking off the axle nut. This will be 30 millimeter. There we go. Once it breaks free, it should come off. Here, I'll do it with my left hand. Pretty easily. And once you have this off, don't forget the sequence because there are going to be spacers inside here. There's going to be a little washer here. Don't lose that. Notice that there's a little bit of a grease on here. We're going to put fresh grease back on this. And then again, don't forget about the spacers. We can start pushing the axle out. And next, you're going to have four pinch bolts. These are six millimeter hex. All right. You're just going to have to loosen them up. You're not taking them out. You're not removing them. You're simply just breaking them and loosening them up. And now you can start pushing this axle out. You just wiggle the wheel and you can start pushing on it and then kind of pull it out from the other side. So this is now a fantastic opportunity for you to clean your calipers and on both sides of the wheel you're going to you're gonna feel out the bearings in here. All right, this is a spacer that's in here. Uh, and you have one of these bearings on both sides. You kind of get to feel the bearing out. Make sure there's no spots in it. This is brand new, it feels really good. And I'm gonna spin around and do the same thing. Here's a spacer on the other side, okay? Remember which way it goes in. All right, and then once again, feel that bearing, spin it around. I'm just using this. It's easier for me to get grip with the cloth to feel it in there and it feels pretty darn good. Let's get this cleaned up. We'll get some fresh grease on everything and get it put back together. And here's the front axle that we took out. We're going to get this cleaned up, get some fresh grease on it, make sure it's looking good and put the bike back together again. You can use whatever grease you want. I just happen to like red and tacky because it sticks wherever you're at. You can see the color, you know it's there, and that's what I use. All right, fresh grease. Get this back in here. All right, this is a spacer for, well, this is flipped around here anyway. And some fresh grease on here. And one of the reasons why I like to use the red tacky is because it has a tendency to hold everything in place. And you want to make sure that you get grease, fresh grease, on the threads right there of the front axle. And now, 
clean this up, the nut, get some grease on it, on the threads. You are greasing these threads and get this ready to go on. And I believe the number is 63 Newton meters. I hope I'm right. It's supposed to be 63 Newton meters. And again, we're gonna get that 30 millimeter and we're going to torque this directly to specifications at 63 Newton meters. Now I wanna mention something before I torque that down, that you're gonna have a lot of back and forth play until you tighten and snug that axle nut up because the forks will spread as you take it off. So this is why it's so critical that you actually have all of the spacers in place on the axle so that this thing is running exactly where it's supposed to be. All right, once we get this snug, what you're gonna see is it's gonna start rotating the entire axle because these pinch bolts right here that take, by the way, a six millimeter, they need to be tightened down only on this side. We gotta do this side first and foremost because if we don't put these pinch bolts on, we're never gonna get this nut torqued to the 63 Newton meters that I believe it is supposed to be. So let's start getting these pinched bolts pinched. All right, and you're just gonna equally go back and forth here and we will eventually torque these to the proper specification. But for right now, we just need to get them snuggled in or snug, not snuggled. All right, then we can come over here on this one and we could of course get this look at that right where it's supposed to be all right and now it's time to put the brembo brakes back in place one of the things we absolutely have to do is really spread out i mean really compress and really spread out these pads because the wider these pads are the easier it's going to be to get it up and over so that might be enough let's see if we can get the pads in there we go you have to have the pads like that now we have we can't forget our spacers now one of the things you have to do is put fresh grease on the threads of these bolts okay these do not get loctite they get grease per ducati all right and let's not forget that spacer so let me start with the bottom one and again like i said i'm just gonna hand tighten these in all right you can see why i don't like them right make sure you put these in the right way so that they don't flip and go into the wheel you have to make sure you put these in the right way and it's the same thing on the other side they face backwards so that this tab hits the caliper so it doesn't go anywhere now again i'm just hand tightening these in Nothing more than hand tightening, okay? And like I think I talked about this on the other side, we're gonna see in a little while why we wait till the end to tighten these down. You're saying, okay, what's next? You're going, hey, Rimbo, you did not tighten these pinch bolts on this side down yet. And I'm gonna go, you know what? You're absolutely right. I did not tighten down these pinch bolts just yet. I'm going to torque both sides but right now this side is tight on the left side of the bike this side is not all right and the reason why is that we've already tightened down the left side which we needed to have happen in order to uh, properly torque the nut for the axle but now we need to make sure that these forks because these forks actually move and spin when you take this wheel off these you know these forks are they sometimes spread out like this so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bounce back and forth a couple of times. We're not back and forth, but up and down. And we're just going to put some weight on the front, lift it back up, put some weight on the front, lift it back up, put some weight on the front, lift it back up, weight on the front, lift it back up, just to try to get this axle and these forks kind of lined up where they should be. Once you do that a few times, we can now go ahead and tighten these down and then torque both sides. When we do this, always remember what we have to do here evenly, one at a time, all right? One, two, one, two, one, two. Same thing on the other side. Let's get them, let's get them snug, then let's get them torqued. 
Okay, according to Ducati, these are 10 newton meters. And that is it. This is that six millimeter. So we're gonna go get one snugged, go to the inside, get it snugged, so you kind of feel it getting some tension. All right, a little bit more. Come over here, a little more tension. Just keep going back and forth so this is nice and even. Hear that? One, come over here. There's that one. Double check this side and this side. Good and good. All right, now I'm gonna repeat it on the other side. Remember when we did this to the calipers, to the front brakes? All right, I didn't wanna accidentally push those pucks out, all right? So now, guess what's gonna happen when I squeeze this? It's gonna go all the way in, all right? Why? Because I have the pads pulled all the way in. So now I have to push all that fluid, there we go, and get it back in place here. Now they're tight, okay? See that? Now they're tight. All right, so let's test them out and then we'll get the uh, calipers torqued down appropriately. Now I got some tension on those front brakes, okay? So now what I'm doing is I'm squeezing this and while I have all this pressure on and it's centering those calipers exactly where they're supposed to be, now I'm gonna tighten down the calipers. And going back to the eight millimeter hex head, we're gonna set this to 45 Newton meters and again, doing it top and bottom, all right? Snug top, all right? Snug the bottom. Keep going back and forth in small increments. It's kind of what we call like the one, two, one, where this will be the, whichever one that goes first is gonna be the, the number one and we'll just go back and forth. Getting closer, one. two, one, and one. All right, so now there's pressure because the wheel will not move because they're clamped down with the, the brake. And now we're gonna repeat on the other side. And now I can take the bike off the stand and get ready to ride it. So that's it, pretty simple. I mean, the torque values are what they are. It's kind of hard to find and get that information from Ducati, but Simple, simple job. I hope you enjoyed this. This is Rainbow. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.